hearts. Yes, Lord. We are here for you. We are here to for hear no your else, word, but for you. to experience yes, you, Lord. to have an encounter with you. Yes, Lord. No one comes before your presence and leaves the same. Yes, Lord. Today we say that may we live as not how we came, yes. that may we live as people that have been equipped with your word. Yes, Lord. May we live as people that has had an encounter with your power. Yes, Lord. May we live as people who have had the meaning of the power that you've given us oh, as Christians yes. to go out there yes. and proclaim your word to others, yes, to go Lord, out Jesus. there to set the captives free, yes. to go out there to heal the sick. Yes. Father, may we experience you. I pray in the name of Jesus yes. that Father, may you work on our hearts, yes, oh God. Lord, if there be anything yes, that will stand in your way, oh God, yes, we denounce it right now yes. in the name of Jesus. Um, and we say that may you have your way. Have your way, Lord. I pray and I commit yes. myself before yes. you. Father, I surrender myself fully yes, under your direction. Amen. I pray and I surrender even my preparation yes, for Lord. you. I surrender my utterance before you. Yes, sir. Everything that we will do, oh God, yes. may it be for your glory. Jesus. May you do it for our sake and for your glory. Amen. Glorify yourself in our midst, oh yes, God. Yes, Lord. Jesus. We will turn, give you all the glory. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, have we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Wow. <laughs> Today is the day. Mm. I never thought this day would come. Wow, it's so hot in here. I'm sweating already. I don't know. Is it because I'm nervous or it's hot? I don't know. Please, it's hot. Eh? Okay. <laughs> God bless you all. I'm excited to be here, not to be standing here to give the word of God, but it is always exciting to be in the presence of God, to be in the midst of believers, like-minded people who love and have the heart to know God more on a deeper level each and every day. So um, for the past three weeks, we've been exploring the series of Possessing the Nations. And please, let's give it up for our three ladies that came before me. In fact, they did so well. Standing here and then looking at you all, I know that, wow, no, they did well. It's not easy to be standing here. It's very nerve-wracking. Oh, is that all you could do? Please give it up for them. They did well. It's not easy. Pre it's not easy at all to be preaching. It's not easy. But they availed themselves um, and God really used them. They spoke to us. And we can all attest that we felt the spirit and the presence of God. Amen. So I also want to just honor our pastor, Pastor Johnny. He's not here, but wherever he is, may God bless him. Because not every pastor would do this to have um, female leaders of the church just, you know, standing and preach like what do you know <laughs> right but he doesn't care it's like no you guys have to do it so wherever he is may god bless him for giving us this opportunity and to i know he would not like this but to our presiding elder elder yeah god bless you this man mm, okay you guys you know him yeah god bless you so much and elder sam god bless you you're always there for us preparing us leading us the right way teaching us what to do at every point in time god bless you all so much so like i said earlier we are um just exploring the series of possessing the nations and today we are looking at the power to possess the nations that is a different um topic that we're going to deal with but the main one i have a sub one that we're going to um look at so i was thinking about this right and you know, power, the word power in itself is a powerful word, right? You cannot say it without an action, like power to possess the nations. Please let me see you say power to, to possess the nations. Amen. And look to the person sitting next to you and say, I've got the power. I've got the power. You have the power. I have the power in Jesus' name. Amen. So that is our sub theme that we're going to look at so we all know that in order for us to go out there 
to declare the words of God and to tell others what we have seen and experienced in God. We cannot do it with our own strength, right? It is not easy to evangelize. Um, if you look around, how many evangelists can you name? We don't have that many, right? Because it's not easy. To be an evangelist, you need to be fully equipped in every area because you won't you won't know the person you're going to experience right the person you're going to encounter if you're an evangelist and you go out to preach the word of god and the person is sick what do you do if you experience one of these controversial um people right that know the word so much but have decided to not do what the word is saying you have to be in the right position to counter their arguments as an evangelist so today we are here to look at this power that god has given us that cuts across every area that we will need as an evangelist as witnesses of god amen so we'll be looking at what power is and um how to know if you have it right confirming because you may not know you're like okay um i think i'm saved i come to church every day but how can i tell that i have this power that we're talking about i have the spirit of god in me we'll look at that and we'll look at why we need this power that we're talking about the purpose god doesn't give his power out for nothing right there has to be something for it and then we'll look at how to activate it we have it in us are we using it is it just dormant what can we do to activate it amen so let's just get right into it um so i looked it up the meaning of power right and so we have two meanings we have physicists come up with their own meanings and the english also have their own meaning of power so i i just want us to look at the physical meaning of power and it says that the rate at which work is done or the energy expended over time i mean if you did science in school you know that okay that is the definition of power when you take a physics class right um and i chose this because of the 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 last part in the definition that energy expended over time because when you think about it um ideally to get more of something you have to store it right you don't have to use it up people say that if you want more money save it if you want um uh more let's say you you have some food stuff right and you want more save it up right to get more but in this case, even in the, phys- the physical meaning is saying that you have to use something up to generate power. And that is just the physical meaning, okay? I just want you to um, keep this in mind because we will look at it when we like down the way, okay? All right, so, and then the second meaning says that um, power is the uh, possession of authority control or influence over others i think it's self-explanatory right (laughs) Right? to have the power you need to be able to influence um, the group of people or the person that you're going to witness to like i said earlier uh, an evangelist you need to be so equipped in terms of knowledge right in terms of um, exercising what you have, your giftings, you need to be up there because you may see, you may meet someone that is like a magician or one of those. Uh, I don't want to say, uh, yeah, ha, huh, yeah. <laughs> they will meet you, and then hmm, if you don't take care, your knees will start shaking and be like, oh, Paul, I know <laughs> Jesus, I know who are you? <laughs> I don't know you. Yeah. So um, that is the other uh, meaning of power so let's look at um how do we know we have the spirit of god how do we know we have the spirit of god um can we please have someone read um romans chapter 8 verse 14 to 17 for us please romans chapter 8 verse 14 to 17 
and can the media please project it on the screen for us thank you romans chapter 8 verses 14 to 17 right for as many as are led by the spirit of god these are sons of god for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out abba father the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god and if children then heirs heirs of god and joint heirs with christ if indeed we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together amen amen so um i had us read this verse because um we all know that um before you can be saved you need to declare with your mouth that jesus is lord and believe in your hearts that god raised him from the dead and in our church we have this doctrine of baptism so that three things has to be done and then you can be rest assured that you are saved right believe in the lord that jesus is lord and then no declare it has to be a pronouncement declare that jesus is lord believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead and not everyone believes in baptism so i won't be like it has to be done but in our church we believe in baptism so when you get baptized too then you know okay i am saved so if you are here and you've done all those three things be rest assured you are saved and if that is true then the verse that we read also becomes applicable to you we have been adopted by god we are sons and daughters of god we are called by his name the power that jesus possessed we also have it because by coming into him he also gave us his spirit right so if you have the spirit of god living in you then you know that this power that we're talking about you have it okay so i know the the, the answer is short i so <laughs> the answer is short how do you know you will know okay because your spirit will testify with the spirit of god that indeed i am saved so if you're here and you if you have any doubts about your salvation if you have any doubts whatsoever i would say that um at, at the end of the service you can meet the elders of the church and they will lead you through guide you through to you know just direct you through the right way and to have you get that confidence that we have in god that yes i have the spirit of god in me i can also go out there and witness i can also go out there and then just um declare what god has done amen so um we'll move on to why we need power so why is it important why why did god give us his spirit why did god give us his power so like i said earlier god does not do anything just for doing sake. he doesn't do it just because he wants to do it right so by him giving us a spirit and him giving us access to that power that jesus possessed it means that he wanted us to do something right so um can i please have our sister margaret she was the only person that i spoke to but i'm going to point someone out here i know who, uh, i someone that i'm very sure has a house number brandon <laughs> hallelujah please can you please come up with your phone please i know you didn't know i'm sorry <laughs> i just put him on the spot okay all right you have uh elder yao's number right okay elder yao can you please take your phone off silence off silence please we want to hear it ring ah your phone is acting up oh jesus the devil is a liar amen <laughs> okay okay you have a phone can you please show them what phone you have can you please show them okay that's pretty right just by the way that is not her phone please <laughs> let me clarify that's not her phone um so um can you both call elder yao power your phone up and then call elder yao please who's who's came in <laughs> who's who's name brandon right okay did you try calling oh why is it off it's dead 
Jesus is Lord. Thank you. Please, who said that? There is no power. <laughs> there is no power. God bless you guys so much. God bless you. So, our mom said it. There is no power, right? This phone had no power. This one had power. So, the phone that had the uh, power with enough battery, <laughs> right? I don't know the percentage you have, but I'm sure it was enough. That's why we were able to call. Um, it was able to serve the purpose of its function, right? We have so many functions for the phone, right? So I'm going on social media all day. <laughs> right? Um, I just use it. YouTube. I'm guilty. YouTube. Like, you know, a lot. Calls. Text messages. We have different functions of the phone. But as Christians, what has God called us to do with this power? What is our purpose? What function must we perform with this power that he has given us? Let us again read from the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 1 verses 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. Amen. So that was straightforward, right? God gave us the power to be witnesses. And that's what we've been saying. Like, I think since I started um, preaching, right? It's been like witnessing, witnessing, witnessing. And the word of God has said it point blank that he gave us his power to be witnesses. So if you have the power of God, if you have the spirit of God in you, and you've not been witnessing, I won't say anything. God have mercy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So um, I will take our next reading from um, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And it says that, And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Right? And then Luke 10, 18 also says that, um, I saw 10... Chapter 10, verse 18 to 19. Sorry. Luke chapter 10, verse 18 to 19 says, I mean, that's the main one that you have to open to. That uh, the Matthew was just a reference. I'll just go back and um, talk about that. So Luke 10, 18 to 19 says, So he told them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to thread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Some versions say nothing will by any means no matter how hard they try, they cannot harm you. You didn't say, this is a powerful verse, so you didn't say amen to it. Hey, imagine God giving us the power to thread on snakes and scorpions, on the enemy, that person that you are afraid of in your job, that person that you are afraid of in your family, that person that you are, that one friend that has been bothering you. God has given you the authority over them. And nothing they do, nothing they, they say will harm you. Think about it for a minute. You know, sometimes we just talk about the power of God and we just brush through it and move on to the next topic. And we're like, oh yeah, power of God. But I just want you to take a moment and think about the power of God. Listen, that's why I read the uh, Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. It says, Jesus said that all power has been given unto me. The power in the heavens, the power on this earth, the power under the earth, the power in the past, the power in the present, the power that is yet to be discovered, right? All of it. The powers you've not seen before. In fact, Juju is even small. Africans, the the, the the worst power we're afraid of is witches, right? The witchcraft. They do, and then you run away. 
and you run away and that's even the least <laughs> I'm sorry yeah that's even the least so think about it all power no like just open your mind right I know there are some I I, I spoke with uh, one person um, some time back and they were like I can't let my mind go to think about things that are beyond me because it scares me I thought that was sad because then how can you even think about the goodness of God right how can you think about how mighty God is but that is not the topic for today but I want you to today right here just let go of your mind and think about this power that we're talking about the power of God the power in the heavens the power on this earth the power under the earth the power you've seen before with the ones you haven't seen before the the powers of the occult the grand masters the 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 please help me what are their names uh i don't even know uh the wizards mm, yeah mm. i want i want the big big ones yeah <laughs> yeah so like just think about that right all of those powers has been given unto god has been given to jesus and who is this jesus that we're talking about he's our savior and how do we know that we have the same power he's talking about because it is in his spirit and where is that spirit it is in us so look at you again put your hand on your chest in fact say i have that power keep repeating it until it becomes real to you i have that power i have the power of god in me i have the power of god in me please keep saying it to yourself i have the power of god in me in the name of jesus i have the power of god in me and i will not fear anything i have the power of god in me in the name of jesus so that is the other purpose right to defeat the enemy so now when you walk into that office and you see that boss that is bothering you it's like ha, you don't know i've got some power here i'm going to exercise it on you you'll be my first victim <laughs> we'll see what will happen amen so um and the next one we'll look at luke chapter 4 verse 18 can i please have someone read it for us luke chapter 4 verses 18 the spirit of the lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free amen amen, amen. so when we see the beginning of this verse touched on everything that we've said so far right witnessing but at the end of it it talks about healing the sick and releasing the oppressed so that is another purpose so again i feel like i'm repeating myself right because once you understand the power and the magnitude of the power that god has given you you will just know that everything i'm saying jesus said that this you see me do you will do it and even much more what are the things that Jesus did? Please help me. What are the things that Je- he healed the sick? Yeah, raised the dead, turned water to wine. He walked on the sea. A lot, right? Imagine Jesus saying, "I walked on the sea," and this, what you saw me do, you would do even much more. That means I'm going to. I I I can walk in the air, right? if he walked on the sea and if he said i can do more than what he did i can only think about the air (laughs) oh jesus hallelujah hallelujah this power is great oh it is mighty it is mighty may god give us understanding amen amen so again healing the sick that if you see if you're able to walk in the air, healing the sick will be so easy for you, right? We just stretch your hand, we like, receive it in Jesus' name. Gone, done, right? That is the power. And then I just wanted to talk about um, the limitations that sometimes Christians put on the power of God. And I want us to walk out of this place with clarity that what you think of God is not what God is, okay? 
there is no limit to the power of God. That we put in him in a box, right? I think sometimes we have a mental picture of how far God can go in what he can do, right? We talked about the signs and wonders Jesus performed. If it were to be in this dispensation, imagine what we would have said, right? This man walked on water. Who is he? Nah, I don't think this is of God. Nah, I think he's an occult. Nah, I think he's a magician. So like, even as Christians, we are so quick to attribute things that blow our mind to the enemy rather than giving it to God. I will repeat that again. <laughs> even as Christians, right? When we see something happen, when we see a miracle happen, when someone gives a testimony, we are so quick. We are the same people because if the testimony gets given in the church, ask yourself, how do the people out there hear about that? It's the people in the church that carries it out and propagates the, their doubts to outsiders for them to also carry it on and then post it right on social media this lady came up here she said she's what 60 years no i'm, I'm not saying literally but i'm just saying <laughs> i'm just saying that um like some lady come up came up here she's 60 years and she's testifying that she had twins how is this possible oh no this is ivf this can never happen how do you know it can never happen are you god you've heard before eh? yeah no, God has been performing miracles, signs and wonders in people's lives. And as Christians, instead of us to help bring that up, to raise the name of God up, and for others to know what our God is doing, we're the same people that are going and giving doubts out there that no, I don't believe it. You don't believe that God can let a 60 year old have twins? Have you read about Sarah? Where was IVF? Thank you, Elder. Where was IVF then? Right? Have you heard about Elizabeth? How old were they? But they were still able to have babies, right? To the glory of God. Well, I'm sure, well, the Bible did not say, but I'm sure there were people around there that still said, mm, I won't believe it. Oh, that's a lie. But no, I want you to leave this place, right? And have it in mind that anything that you hear in someone's life, that God has done something marvelous that you will believe that yes the God I am serving is capable of doing it and I know that the God I am serving is the one that did it even if they did IVF leave it up to them they are saying it was God so we say it's God amen and so they come up to tell us where they actually got the babies from we will say it was God amen and now Christians cannot even be rich anymore we cannot be rich. <laughs> we cannot be rich. You don't know what people do in their secret places. You don't know the covenants people enter into when they are having a communion with God. You don't know the tears of people. You know, we all come out here, right, with smiley faces, you know, like bright eyed, like, ooh, okay, everything is okay, but you don't know what people are going through. For some, they feel like there is a mandate on them to break a generational curse, some generational thing that is happening that no one can be financially stable in their family. And some people, they've taken it upon themselves that this thing will end in my generation. And you don't know the exercises those people go through. The prayers, the fasting, 
the toil, sleepless nights, the cries, God save me, this has to end. God save me, this has to end. And eventually, by God's own power, God steps in and he delivers them out of that poverty. And again, Christian brothers and sisters, ah, I know this sister. I even know how she used to dress. Uh, her shoes crashed. She used to buy it from um, my... <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with Ross. I know. Nothing wrong with Ross. <laughs> DJ Max Marshall's nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Yes, that's why I didn't want to mention any store's name. <laughs> okay, I'll just say a thrift store, right? Yeah, aha. That's acceptable, right? Aha. Please forgive me. I'm not saying you are poor if you shop there. Amen. Amen. But I'm just trying to say that we make reference to how we knew the person and in our minds and in our heads we feel like that has to be how she has to remain she cannot be blessed if she starts getting money hmm this lady went to dubai mm, is she doing <laughs> i'm not going to say but if she <laughs> You should do what I think people have been going to Dubai to do, right? <laughs> Please, I didn't say anything. I beg. If you know, you know, right? If you know, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, uh, and and this lady or brother or sister, right, gets blessed overnight. And then we start our stories. Nah, my friend. Mm, that means there's something there, right? Please, for those that don't understand, she, yeah. <laughs> Sorry for Tima. Yeah, so that, that means, nah. Mm, no, 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 no. How can you be poor today and be rich tomorrow? Nah, this is not God. But we forget about the power of our God. You forget about the power of that, the God of that sister. You forget about the, 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 the God of miracles. Thank you, Ma. We forget. So we put God, like, so I, so I think now we have a lot of people that are even afraid to exercise this power that God has given them for the fear of what people will say about them. Some people have the gift of healing. They're scared. Come to church and lay your hand on someone. Hey, you know, but yeah, prophet is stopping. It's when, oh, I'm sorry, like, <laughs> yeah, right? Lay your hands on someone. Since when? The fact that you, you, you no, like, must God consult you first before he does something for someone? He doesn't, right? He has the power. He's our sovereign. And he's on time to thank you. Maybe you 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 proposed that okay, be, um let me calculate. She um she completed college um this year. Um let's give her about five, ten years, then she'll probably get into the six figures bracket. Um so maybe yeah, five, ten years. We can we don't we don't have time for that. And your time is not God's time. You are just saying that they should be able to be rich five years after college. God is saying that I'm going to make them rich a day after they complete. What will you say? What will you say? Nothing, right? So this was not actually part, but I just want us to clear our heads, clear our minds, and please infect other Christians when you go out there. When you meet a Christian brother or sister somewhere in a different church and they're talking ill about the miracle that God has performed, tell them that, were you there? 
what is their story let them say their story let them tell their story and let us give the glory to god amen amen okay so we'll move on to how to activate this power so i want you to stay with me um what we're going to do here will be like um whenever wherever however i'm led if we have to pray we just oh and please if you are praying i want you to pray okay so that we know about the power of god pray i know some of you are quiet but please pray with me in jesus name amen amen so let's look at how to activate this power that we're talking about how can we activate it we talked about um declaring that jesus is lord we talked about believing in our hearts that god raised him from the dead we talked about baptism that confirming that we're saved and you were saved having the spirit of god in us and if we have the spirit of god in us it means we have that power in us as well but do we truly exercise this power that we've been given let's look at how if 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 your uh not your hour right if our power has been just lying there dormant this is the day and this is how we can charge it up um from the illustration that we had earlier from our brother brendan and our sister margaret god bless you again um we realized that our brother brendan was able to give the call to elder yao because he had power in his phone right and we all know how we get power onto our phones you charge it right so this daily thing these exercises they charge us up it charges our spirit up it puts into use remember the use i was talking about the physical meaning of power it puts into use what we have in us remember the uh when we started the meaning of power that i gave that it had we don't conserve this to get more of it we use it up in order to get more we use it up to get it to the level that we want it to be amen so again to charge our phones by plugging your charger in the um in the in the outlets that is you acknowledging that the power in your battery is low and whatever voltage we have in this walls is high right so as christians if we do all these exercises we are acknowledging that yes we have the power of god in us but the main source of our power is god and we cannot well yeah we live in this world right a lot of things go on around us we see a lot of things we hear a lot of things there is a constant battle between our spirit and the world right but if we acknowledge that this power has to be um activated it has to be used up then we will always go before god who is the main source to draw from him daily he will be our supply you know when your phone some people cannot stand to have their phone go on even 50% they will freak out be like 50% oh my god where is my charger and then they will go and they will charge so at the end of today's sermon right i want you to do something even even if you don't get anything at all from this preaching whenever you pick your phone to charge i just want you to ask yourself have you charged yourself whenever you pick your phone to charge right any day any time I just want you to just take a moment and ask yourself have I charged myself and if your answer is no please put your phone down even if it's 5 minutes 10 minutes charge yourself up by prayer charge yourself up by what we're going to talk about the first one is devotion amen So can someone please open to um the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 and as that um gets pulled up I'll just um talk about what devotion means. Um 
so we usually think about devotion as that daily routine of you know some people do it in the morning some do it in the afternoon some do it before they go to bed i'm not here to talk about the right time to do it but i'm here to talk about doing it and doing it right amen and so with devotion means love loyalty enthusiasm for a person activity or a cause right so hey should i say this so even if you 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 you, you do your devotion but you are not fully into it you can't call it devotion you are just doing it to check it off just so if elder y'all calls you and ask you we, we, we can tell him that yes i did it but you truly did not do it so if we are in that exercise of doing our devotion it has to be our everything in us please read it for us if you have it open yeah 6 verse 4 Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 Hear O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one Amen Read on. Yeah, please. Okay. <laughs> um love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Amen. 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 And then please the next one it says and these words that I command you today shall be in your heart. That is a command, right? And he's talking talking about loving the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our might. Mean that when we are during the time of devotion what has to be involved please help me what has to be involved amen can we please repeat that during our devotion time what has to be involved amen if these three things are in what you are doing and you can truly say that i did my devotion and I know it is difficult. It's easier said than done, right? It is because listen, things be going on in our lives. Sometimes you like you are running late for work. Okay, not even that because I think some I mean everyone always finds time that is right for them. So not, let me not say um the lateness for work. Um but you may be you may be in debt, right? life crushing you from every angle things are not working at all looking for a job about to be kicked out of your apartment owing um student loan um you having a sick child in the hospital um your husband being jobless your wife giving you troubles in the in the house they don't even want you to have peace but in the midst of that God is saying I still want your heart. I still want your soul. I still want your strength in the time of devotion. It is not easy. So what you can do is when is that time? Just give it up to him, God. I know I'm going through a lot. I know there is a lot happening on around me. But this is a me and you time. I am here for you. take away any distraction take my away my troubles in fact if you tell god he will do it jesus said you you don't receive because you don't ask right but if you ask you receive it so in that moment you just have to tell god here i am i'm trying but i need you to help me help me to focus on you my mind i cannot i cannot control the things that are going on in my mind right now but I also want to give you this time that I have to help me to focus on you now and trust me he will do it you will feel his peace it will overwhelm you you will not understand where it will come from but you will get out of that place and be like wow god did it so I just want us to pray If you if you have not been fully committing to devoting some of your time I'm not talking about the 24 hours of your day it can be 5 minutes it can be 10 it 
can be 15 but in this time it has to be everything your all the full focus on God I want you to open your mouth and tell God the father I'm here before you Jesus Lord. I have not been very honest with giving you my time Lord, and I even if I do the devotion I don't do it so well father, so but today I'm here I'm praying to you to seek you every that day. you give me that strength so father, I pray that, that I whenever I come Jesus. before you father, may I have the to perform my devotion I have the strength to May you help me phone, and give me focus. May you help me to forget about everything that is going on around me. May you help me. We need God's help. Pray for his help. We need the help of God. It's only him that can do this. May I place you first. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So from today onwards, if you've not been doing it and you have not been doing it right, it's going to be right in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we'll move on to the next one is fellowship. Okay, I think I'm running out of time, so we'll just okay. So the next one is fellowship, right? Um, so yesterday the ladies went on a hike and it was very fun. Please, if you weren't there, you missed out. Just so you know, I'm just telling you. But don't worry. I think we'll, we'll be having more coming up. Um, our Dickness Flow, our sister Pauline, will just let us know the next activity to partake in. But we went on this hike and we met this um, woman. So I was walking with Henrietta and we met this lady and she was like, are you guys a walking group? I think that was honestly, I'm being honest. That was the first time I had heard that. I won't lie to you. Is it working group or what group? What? Ah, okay. So what they said. <laughs> yeah. So it's like a group of people coming together, right? To exercise, right? Um, and I was like, oh, okay. I think this is a good point to put under the fellowship. So um, we all know that this Christian thing that we're doing is a journey, right? We all have a goal. Um, ahead of us that we're all striving to attain but you cannot do it alone you cannot do it by yourself you need community you need people that are like-minded you need people that has the same goal to to walk with and why these people get into um, the fitness groups and gym buddies and walk walking partners is because when you're weak your partner will most likely be not weak at that time so you just motivate if you are two you motivate each other if you're more than two motivate one another going together right rubbing off the energy off of each other when someone is weak you keep them up in prayer that's the importance of community you have to be a part of something you have to be a part of this community in c3 amen please if you are not a part of any group in c3 after this sermon Cup, yes, Cup Academy. If you go through Cup Academy, we get to know all the different groups we have. Be a part of something. Let us all grow together. Trust me, it is not easy. And to be real to you, we have a tendency of getting weak as Christians. Yes, we've had, we've talked about power, but it, it can happen that you will feel like you will not be yourself sometimes and i think i experienced that some few weeks back i didn't even show up to church god forgive me i was so down i was so down i literally texted um bigness for and bigness for that i'm not coming to church i was so down but i think um because Porsche um told her the yeah so he called me and i told him i was like it's not easy no like i'm being real to you if you're going through that you don't have to think that that is the end of it reach out to someone that's why we are all traveling together that's why we are all on this journey together reach out to someone a brother or a sister someone that can hold you up in prayer there's someone can, that can be there for you because if you isolate yourself and you get weak you're going to be weaker and weaker and weaker no matter what you do and you just go down, down, down. You lose your power and off. 
it is gone. But we don't want to get to that part. But by God's grace, our elder stood in for me. I told him, please pray for me. I like I need your prayer. And he did it. And God revived me. And here I am to the glory of God. Amen. Okay, so the next one, fasting. Okay. Um again, fasting. Uh we know fasting is difficult, okay? <laughs> Food is good. I won't lie to you. Food is sweet. <laughs> but <laughs> fasting too is important. You know, like sometimes the, <laughs> the day you declare a fast, that's the day you see some free food. Free food. And then the free food will be the good ones too. The ones you've been craving for for years. The devil is a liar. Oh. No, why that day? Why did the food not come when I wasn't fasting? Please, it's a, <laughs> it's a devil. <laughs> At this point, that's what we can say, right? It's a devil because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's the devil. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, so I mean, what fasting does is it humbles us. Mm. I think some people think that fasting changes God. It expedites what the process that God is going, I mean, taking you through. If God is going to, I mean, if God says he's going to take 10 years probably by fasting, oh, I will shorten it one year. Uh uh-uh. uh. That's not what he does. I'm not going to lie to you. It will rather humble you to acknowledge the dealings of God, the process that God is taking you through, and for you to also know and hear what God is saying at what point in your life. And trust me, if you fast and you subject this body, you get full control over this body, your spirit beca- becomes so enlightened, becomes so like you sharpen, you, it, your, your, your spirit gets sharpened that whatever God says, you just catch it, you hear it. And it's easy for you to do and to go into that direction that God has um, given you because like you are humbled, right? Like, I know I'm doing this, but like not natural. I'm not saying when, when you're fasting, please go about working like this. No, that's not what I'm saying, please. But like, you, you get what I mean? Like, it, it puts you in a right position with God like it positions you so well that whatever God is saying that you hear it that the power that he has given us the more we subject this physical body the more the power gets um, heightened right it becomes big it grows in us and we're able to exercise it so please fasting is good Elder yeah, we're going to go on a 100 day <laughs> well please I'm there people are like huh (laughs) no please i'm just kidding but no like it doesn't have to be it's good to be a part of fasting that the entire church does but it's also good to set your own days for yourself for you and god right and you don't only have to fast when you have problems don't wait for that time because you would just you would just be anxious for nothing because you would think that because you have a problem and because you are fasting that god should send you answers right meanwhile if you had prepared yourself prior right with you know constant fasting and stuff you would have known that this problem yes it is here but i know god has promised that he would take care of it some time to come so what he would do is it will prepare you and then um just help you to keep trusting right yeah will help you to keep trusting so fasting is good again it helps us to um charge the power up in the name of jesus amen please so this one too please i want us to pray we need a grace for fasting and you cannot do it by yourself we need a grace so i want you to close your eyes and pray father I haven't fasted in a very long time. I don't even remember the last time I fasted. But today I am before you. 
I need your grace. I need your grace. The grace to fast in order to charge my power up, in order to activate this power that you have given me. I am ready to be a witness. I am ready to do what you have called me to do. But I know I cannot do it with my strength. I know I cannot do it with my own mind. I know you alone can help me. So I need you to give me this grace to fast, this grace to seek your face in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Worship. Worship. The next thing. So everything that we're talking about. Again, please, if I detour, forgive me. You all know what we're talking about, right? The power of God. The power of God in us. How we can activate it. So everything we've said so far, when we do it, it activates that power that we have in us. Worship. Worship is the expression of love for God. Right? I know sometimes, you know, like, um, I mean, people, everyone worships differently, okay? I'm not here to um, judge or to say how you do your worship is wrong, no. But for me, during the time of worship, I just like to just think about just God. See, God is so big. You cannot finish thinking about him. We cannot like even if we're to take the entire like your whole lifetime you can still not know and understand the fullness of god so during the time of worship that is where we express our love for him the book of psalms majority of that book is about david just talking about the how how beautiful god is his strength his might who is like him that we, there is none like him even this power i don't want to go out to talk about the other attributes of god let us stick with this the power that we're talking about can you ever understand the full power of god you cannot because we're talking about the power in the heavens do you know the power in the heavens you don't know it do you know the power on this earth you, you only know about some do you know the power under the earth we don't know it do you know the power that is yet to be discovered? You don't know it. But even if during worship, you are you only focus on just the power of God, that is enough topic for you to even get into like so much worship. Like, God, you are powerful. God, you are powerful. God, you are powerful. What can he not do? What situation can he not change? What is beyond him? Nothing. God is powerful. God is powerful. Just worshiping Him truly, in truth, and in spirit, right? Jesus said it. That's the true worship. It sharpens us up. See, everyone loves to be um, applauded, right? You think God doesn't like it when we applaud Him? When we give Him all this praise? that God, wow, you are so great. Great are you. We always sing this song. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. God is so great. He's so mighty. I think when you read the book of Isaiah, somewhere chapter 40, um, he talks about God measuring the dust of this earth in his hand. Just imagine that. This dust too of this entire earth he measures it in his hand just try and picture it how big has must his hand be to measure every dust just think about it god is great amen so in that time to get charged up if your battery is at two percent it will get to four eventually it will rise up by and by please i'm not saying go and start from two to hundred you will blow up it is a constant thing. <laughs> it's a constant thing and you don't compare yourself to uh, someone we're all on different journeys we're together but our journey is different if someone is sprinting it means you don't have to to stop your um your trot and then sprint to you break your knee right if someone is walking we also have to extend grace to the ones that are sprinting please the ones that are sprinting here have mercy on us we are walking let us take our time 
will come up eventually. Amen. To the ones some are crawling, let us help help them. Helping them doesn't mean, you know, like, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, like, it, just help, right? Not like, let's go. Why are you so slow? No, right? Just pull them along by and by. Encourage. Teach them. Let them know how they can also do it. Amen. And our last point, prayer. Prayer. Amen. Prayer. Communication with God. For me, I feel like prayer is, as Christians, prayer is not, as, uh, it's not an option. It's a necessity because we are at war, right? Do you think that um, the enemy is happy that you're here? serving God he is not and he is not going to stop trying to get you back from wherever God took you from he will never stop so you also don't have to stop praying and running away from him okay you don't have to stop charging yourself amen so what prayer does is it builds our capacity, okay? It builds our capacity to receive the fullness of God. Again, we said God is great. God is mighty. In, hmm. If this doesn't blow your mind, me, it blows my mind. Oh. No, imagine this power that we've talked about and God saying that it is in me. Look at my size. And having God in me right but it is not the dimension right how big or how small i am we're talking about a spiritual thing if we pray it is not our physical body that will be enlarged it is our spirit man that will be enlarged our spirit has no limits just as god is limitless our spirit has no limits the more we pray the more we charge ourselves up the more we edify ourselves in the spirit and in, in the language of the spirit then we grow i remember sunday school we had this song read your bible pray every day if you want to grow right when i was young i thought it was literal grow i'm thinking please i don't want to be big <laughs> i will read my bible i will pray yeah <laughs> but you know little mind i thought it was the physical body but now i understand that we're talking about the spiritual man the spirit in us will grow the spirit in us will be able to do exploits the spirit in us will be that evangelist that we want to be the spirit in us will help us to be that prophets or the prophetess that you want to be mm -hmm. the spirit in us will help you to be that teacher that god has called you to be it is the spirit that does all this it is if you think i'm here if it were to be left to me grace this preaching it wouldn't have happened ask uh, elder young and elder sam the number of times i fought with them to not preach but it is not by might not by power but by the spirit what we think we cannot do by the spirit of god he charges us up that power that he has given us he gives us the grace to exercise it amen the word of god says that if that spirit that raised jesus from the dead if that same spirit is living in us it will quicken our mortal bodies so even so there has to be an effect of the power right we have to see a physical effect of the power that we have in us right it will quicken our mortal bodies it will quicken any dead thing in us it will quicken our dead gifts in the name of jesus so i just want us to pray this is the, the end of uh my 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 the word that god sent me to deliver amen so we are getting we're going to get into a time of prayer we're going to can, you, can we please be upstanding getting into a time of prayer if that spirit that raised jesus from the dead 
if that same spirit, if you truly believe that you have that same spirit in you, then it will quicken your mortal body. It will quicken everything that is in you. I just want you to raise your voice and say, Father, I thank you for your word. I pray that any dead thing in me, if I have not been exercising this power that you've given me, I pray in the name of Jesus, may I be quickened for your glory in the name of Jesus. May I be quickened in the name of Jesus. Let there be a quickening in the name of Jesus. Mando shadebe rika sota yanda baya rika shete yende briado satai mo sheta yanda bako sheta yanda ba rimo sheta yende be rika shata yanda ba mo sheta yandi briado sita yanda ba mo shika di briado sita yende be riba shata yandi briado sita yen mo shi anda briada sata yanda ba reke shete yendi briado sita yandi briado sha reke shete yandi briado sita yende rasha ta yanda mo sete ye let there be a quickening right now in the name of Jesus rado shata yande be reke shete yanda ba may our spirits be quickened risho ta yende be any dead gift in us today may it come back to life in the name of Jesus rimo shi anda rado shete yande be rika shata yande ba rimo shete yande be rika shata yande ba rimo shita yande be rimo shata yande ba rimo shita yande be rimo shita yande be rimo shita yande be rimo shita yande be